Okay, today I want to talk about Conrod failure. You know when you're driving along and you're 4 AGE and you hear a sound that sounds like this? You know that you run a Conrod. Well, if you've never seen a Conrod bearing, it should be about the thickness of this. I'm not saying that this is a good one, but that's a Conrod bearing, right? Have a look here. This is a 4 AGE, 20 valve. Watch what's happening here. No good like that. With the amount of combustion pressure here, slamming down on here, while this crank doesn't really want to turn, that's where you get that smashing noise from, right? Sounds just like a hammer on steel, because it is like that. Then you pull it apart, you've got to be careful here because you can get real cut. Then you pull your poor little bearing out and she's toast. Now, two seconds ago, here's the thickness it should be, approximately. Here's the thickness that it is. It's just toast. And if you have a look here, you see white metal bearing. Yeah, well, why is there white metal bearing on the middle mains? Well, what happens is, see this ball here? Well, the ball is covering a hole that they, they cross-drilled this crank through here. So these oil ports are connected to this oil port. These are connected to there. They're connected to here and all the way along. And you get your oil supply, right? So then, when you run a conrod, like you do here, it is toast. That is called a journal, and you can, man, that's moving by like half a mil with my fingernail high and low, right? On a good day, it should look something like this journal. Smooth, polished. In fact, here's another crank here that's in good nick should be nice and shiny like that right so it's all bad at that point now here's what you don't want to do you don't want to reuse the same conrod because see how it's turned blue it's all over if the conrod turns blue like this she's a throwaway item all right so you've got different choices you can take your crank to the machine shop they can machine it down by so many thou, and you can order oversized bearings for your mains and for your conrods, right? If you're in the 4AGE world, probably the best thing to do is just get another crank out of a second-hand motor. So if you look around here, we got motors everywhere. So we've got a motor here, motor here, motor on the stand, and another motor in there on the floor. So that's what I'm going to do instead of spending big money at a machine shop. Now I'll tell you what my theory is. See these little sumps on these little 4AG 20 valves? And this baffle in here, right? Well, 4AGs rev real hard, right? And then you drive to work and you're home and you go to work and you're home and all week long and then two or three weeks goes by and you and I have both done it. We pull the oil sump plug out like this and we go to do an oil change and oh, there's only like this much oil in the sump, and there should have been four litres of oil in the sump. I really don't think 20 valve uh, 4AGs blow conrods all the time. I think 4AG 20 valves run out of oil, aerate the oil because it's too low, and then it gets in here. The oil level's low, you go around the corner. It foams the oil coming up in here because now it's sucking oil and air. And then up here you get aerated oil and then, then you get bearing failure because the oil is the safety layer between the bearing and the journal. So as a last word of encouragement, if you've got a 4AG 20 valve, I reckon you should have it at least 5 to 7 mils higher than the full mark it's still well below you know the, the windage tray at that point 
and uh, I reckon you're just a little bit over and you just can't fail to check the oil otherwise you're going to end up with a Conrod run like this so uh, if you've never seen a Conrod I really made this for the novice guys I know there's a lot more tech that we could have talked about but I uh, hope you enjoyed uh, seeing what makes an engine knock especially a 4AG